blue jay in there somewhere. You can hear him crawling away. Nice windy day out here today. There goes blue. She's excited. She knows what time it is. Get out here early in the morning. And get blue some exercise before getting to some of the projects. Sit and fetch. Sit, sit, fetch. Drop, drop, sit, 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 and fetch. Blue is coming along nicely. See, she's a year and a half, year old brown lab, as you can see. I can't say that our, hey, drop, sit, sit, stay. We could put more effort into training her, but she's a bright dog and the minimal, minimal amount we put in, she picks up quite quickly. Are you ready to go? Fetch. Come on over here. You gonna drop? Drop. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Good girl. You gonna keep coming, Blue. We'll head on our trail back over to the to the barn, to the pole barn, the big red shed. And there it is, the big red barn, the back of the big red barn. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Woodland Reboot. I'm Peter here at the Reboot. Guys, I've got my Woodland Mills 122 sawmill and today I need to do a little maintenance on this machine. Let's see what we've got here under the cover. We've got three lasps. They need to be unhooked. I think I left the lower ones off the other day. Tension is off, of course. So what I need to do, guys, is get this belt replaced. I've let it actually wear down a little bit too low. The belt is supposed to sit proud of this drive wheel, so this is the drive belt from direct from the shaft to the drive wheel on my uh, HM122. The newer versions, I believe, have a tensioning uh, mechanism in there. This is an older model, three years old, two, three years old, so it's the old uh, version. Um, so let's get busy and let's get this uh, belt replaced. So just a few days ago, everybody, I ordered the belt replacement kit from Woodland Mills. Right now on the website it says that uh, it could be up to two weeks due to the COVID situation. Guys, literally, it took uh, Woodland Mills, I'm going to say, three days to get these to me. So thanks to everybody at Woodland Mills for uh, your hard work in shipping out these replacement parts in an extremely efficient manner during these difficult days. So again, thanks, guys. Um, guys, this is the polyurethane that goes on, I think it's called the follower wheel here. Mine is still in very good condition. It's sitting up probably at least an eighth of an inch, if not more. Uh, so that's not an issue. So we'll keep that for a later date. But as I mentioned earlier, I'll, I'll give everybody a shot in here in a minute. My uh, drive belt here is definitely worn and needs to be replaced. So let's get on with the first steps here of the replacement process. Let's get this up and out of the way. We'll put it on the saw up there. Uh, first step, guys and gals, I need to get my blade out of the way. So with the tension already off, this is a very easy process blade just pops out. If you notices, I'm wearing some pretty heavy gloves. They're not the ones that came with the, the uh, saw a few years ago. I've worn those out, I think, or I can't find them right now. And let's uh, put the blade around the back here where it's out of the way, at least for now. It's a wet day here in eastern Ontario, in the Merrickville area of eastern Ontario. So you'll hear the pitter-patter 
on the cover to my sawmill, but the cover allows me a nice dry place to work while it's raining outside. Okay, let me show you some of these parts here. So there's the shaft and the clutch in there. And here's the main drive wheel. And you can see right here, right as you come into this area here, this area right here, I hope that focuses and let's see, come on light, there we go. The drive belt is supposed to sit proud of the drive wheel. And as you can see, it's worn down almost flat. So I let that go farther than it should have. I think you're supposed to be proud a minimum of 1 16th before you replace. So I left this a little bit long, my bad. Um, so to remove the drive belt, you obviously have to uh, reduce the tension. And to do that, you go around the back. And so what I have to do in the coming minutes is loosen these four motor mounting bolts and then I think it's clockwise to reduce the tension or relieve the tension pressure on that uh, screw with that screw there. And the motor will therefore then slide that way, removing the tension from the belt. So let me get busy with that. Too loose. I might be in front of the camera here a little bit, but to get these next two. So with these four engine mount bolts loosened, I can now back off this here. So with the tension backed off, I think I have to also coax the motor a bit. I have to be careful when I tighten that so that it's not. So I think I've loosened it enough to be able to get it off. I could back it off more, but again, like I said, I think it's loose enough if we just edge it out this way, and there we go. The belt is off. Let's get this on and see if we've got a difference here. Okay, so I backed it off some more. Let's see if I did it enough. I think I did. All right, we are on. And see, can you guys see from there how much that wheel, that, sorry, the drive belt sticks up above the wheel? That uh, is dramatic compared to where that worn out belt was that I just took off. So that's my mistake for leaving it that long, everybody. I should have replaced this belt sooner. Everybody, if you have a mill like this, you want to watch that belt and make sure that it's not wearing down. They actually have a nice uh, feature in these belts, a nice blue line. Essentially, when you get to that blue line, you've worn out your belt. <clears throat> I think everybody can see now how much this sits up above the edge of the cast iron or cast steel wheel. I still have to uh, tighten the belt. Let's tighten this up a bit and play around with it and try to get that engine secured again with those four mounting bolts. 
So now it's time to re-tension the blade. So in case you didn't see it clearly before on that previous angle, here is the tensioner. And uh, I'm going to crank that around a few times. Because the new belt is actually on there with quite a bit of tension already because that old belt had really just been worn out and stretched uh, quite a bit. So that is already beginning to feel quite Maybe a little bit more. And if I don't quite get it right, obviously I can, I can continue to adjust this. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll show you guys that in a second. So with that done, I like where that tension is set to. It's time to um, Retighten those engine mounting bolts. Okay, so that belt is in place, it's been retensioned, and the four mounting bolts have, are retightened as well. So the manual says a quarter inch deflection, you know, not more than a quarter inch. So that definitely is not more than a quarter inch. Let me know if you think I have. Uh, over tighten that, especially you guys if you're watching from uh, Woodland Mills uh, service department. Now you guys actually have my email, so it's Peter at the Woodland Reboot um, if you see something wrong there. So now it's just left for me to get that blade back on. That is not a very hard thing to do everybody. And obviously well worth it to maintain the uh, health of your machine. This blade is probably on the verge of being too dull, but I'm cheap. I'm going to run it a little bit longer. The thing I want to do here is change out these two spruce sleeper logs that I've been using to load logs up onto the sawmill deck. I want to swap them out for two beat up ash logs. I need these spruce logs. I've got some projects, the transition and change process I want to get done with the shed trying to turn it into a small cabin, so I need these spruce logs to mill up some lumber. This one right here has got quite a bend in it, so I might, I mean, what is that? That's a 12 foot log, so I might take four feet off it and uh, that'll help me get some eight foot lumber out of it. Just got to tension up the blade here. And then off to the side here, I don't know if you can see them, I've got a couple of spruce logs that I want to mill up.
beautiful grain on this ash log. Now this was a dead standing tree. I felled it a couple months ago and it's been sitting around soaking wet inside. Not soaking wet, but that is far from far from dry. So that's going to need probably 10 to 12 months of just air drying if you want to get it to uh, natural dryness without any kind of kiln process. So that is not ready to use at any stretch of the imagination. Let's get those loaded up and out of the way. Okay, let's mill these spruce logs.
There's one 2x6, and I'll make 2x4s uh, out of the rest of it. Maybe one board will come out of it as well. Well, I made a miscut. I have to change my plan here, make another 2x6. All right, everyone, what do I have in this little pile? That spruce log, again, being one of the sleepers that I've been using for the better part of uh, a year, probably a little bit over a year, uh, to, move, to act as the base for rolling logs up onto the sawmill deck. Uh, that last one had quite a bit of rot in it, and so the point is that um, I did not get as much wood out of it as, as I wanted. So one board and three solid 2x4s 
uh, each about nine and a half feet long. And what else did I get? I got a one by six and a couple more boards that are off screen right now. So with those two sleepers, I've got the majority of the wood I need to frame out the inside of the shed to turn it into a cabin to create the framing that I need to insulate it. I may have to go buy a couple of two by fours. So that's not bad. I've replaced the sleepers with uh, some really ratty old ash Seems logs. Good. And uh, that is the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up, subscribe and like. Thank you. Lost that blade. That blade had been on there for a number of days and had a crack in it very clearly. I'm glad it broke then and not during milling.